Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of all these numbers in the Arizona real estate market. And by watching, you will know what's going on in this market. So no long, <clears throat> not only will you be full of knowledge, but you'll be a hit at all the cocktail parties. And today, if you hit the like button, the winds will quit and my allergies will get better. So do that for the greater good. <laughs> man, oh man. Hey, we got a comment already from Betta. And she says, we're coming to you from Italy. So welcome, welcome. She said, uh, we decided not to pay outrageous prices for a house. And we're now living in Italy again, still waiting for a house in Arizona at a good price point. And I said, well, you might have a long wait. And to which she said, we have plenty of wine to hold us over for a while. I <laughs> love your program. I like how you think. That's that's the way to go. I, uh, I've got plenty of wine too, but for totally different reasons. <laughs> I need to go to Italy. So anyway, inventory is starting to come up, but it, not for the reasons that you, you think it might be. People aren't panicking and putting their homes up for sale. But let me show you what we're looking at here. As you know, I track a seven-day moving average. So this blue area here are the number of listings that have come on in the past seven days and then the red line is homes under contract see how that's gone down you know the rates went up right here started climbing severely and down down we go and i'm going to show you some more numbers but the gap now between homes under contract and new listings is almost 700 and we had been tracking around between three and four hundred maybe um, and so as you can see, we were pretty much hugging as soon as the homes come on the market, we grabbed them. Well, now that story's changed a little bit. And then I started tracking price changes too. And you can see that, uh, price changes are starting to go up. That's usually price reduction. So we are seeing a, a bunch of that, but not huge. I mean, don't get excited. It's not, uh, it's not a big number. This is the trend that you need to see for a balanced market. And so... Let me go right to this screen here on what the Cromford market says to, at the beginning of April here. And, and it's, I'll read kind of some highlights for you because I don't expect you to read all this. But it said, the downward trend in supply that started in late October has reversed during March. And we're now seeing what appears to be a significant rising trend. However, this is not due to incoming new listings. It's due to fewer active listings going under contract. Ordinary owner-occupied home buyers are hitting real trouble. Boy, say that again. Um, and it says here that the problem, it says in, in this way, an expensive market reduces demand and prices start to climb less steeply. At least they would do it if it were not for the investor demand. And we've talked about that there. They're killing us. Many investors are flush with cash, and to them, residential real estate looks like a safe haven, a hedge against inflation, revenue producing, unlike many stocks, cryptocurrencies, commodities, and gold, and very tangible. It looks extremely attractive when coupled with rising rents, but the problem is rents are not rising anymore. So the rent, right, the rent rates going up has stopped. Uh, they haven't come down to the point where you're feeling it yet. <clears throat> but the price per square foot for rentals is uh, uh, starting to trend down. That may that may make some investors kind of pull back and not purchase um, as many as they are right now. I don't see it making them dump these houses and put them on the market. There's no reason for them to do that. They've already got good cash flow. But they may start moving on to some something else with their money again over time now i surveyed um you the audience out there are you delaying your home purchase because 146 people voted 55 percent of you said yeah because prices are too high um rates are too high seven percent uh, said that but those two added together is why people are waiting 31 percent of you think prices are going to come down and eight percent think rates will come down. So we will see. We will see. Lewis, good morning. Um, <clears throat> for prices to come down, that inventory number I showed you has to really rocket up, and we're nowhere near that yet, although it is a positive trend. But remember, prices were going up like crazy here in 2020 when we had 13,000 active listings, and we're sitting here now at 4986. Uh, <laughs> Terry says, I'm changing my name to Ernest, now Ernest Money. <clears throat> Where you been, Terry? Um, so, so even when we get up to here, you're still going to see some price increases, but we're on our way. 
Here's the active listing counts right here. You can see how it spiked up. I mean, spiked up quickly. It's really kind of the fastest spike we've seen in a long time. Uh, but again, nowhere near what we saw here in 2021, 7,410. Today, we're at 5,300 homes. So that's maybe 100 more than what we saw last week on the market. But here's what's going on with the Cromford Market Index. Now, this index uses 100 as a balanced market. Anything above 100 for buyers, uh, for, for contracts, means that uh, it's in favor of uh, sellers. So here's, here's supply. Supply is, has been going down. And it's just continuing to go down a little bit. Demand has dipped. But it also dipped back here in January of 2021. And it started coming down at a pretty good clip buyer demand and then it went started rocking back up the first quarter now we're going back down the combination between that and the supply gives us what's called the market index 100 down here being a balanced market even though we're going the other way we're still at 468 so that's uh, quite the road that we need to hit to get down to a balanced market but you know as as inventory starts climbing uh, pricing pressure will 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 succeed so not succeed recede the guess on interest rates anybody's guess in fact there's an article out there um, on fox business is that housing market experts forecast limited inventory high pro, high pro prices i can't talk this morning through 2024 now, I showed you some of the forecasts that we already had for 2022. They're all over the map. Realtor.com said 2.7%. Zillow said 16 Now, this isn't a Zillow forecast. This is a survey conducted by Zillow. <clears throat> Basically, they're saying despite hopes that rising mortgage rates will cool off the competitive real estate market, housing supply, and listing prices, it may not return to pre-pandemic levels anytime soon. So we would need inventory to absolutely skyrocket like today, uh, for that to happen. So here's what their chart is saying. When will housing inventory return to 1.5 million units? So they're, they've got here that our growth was 36, 37, 11.6, 6.3. Um, so they're not predicting any downward trend in prices or in inventory. Uh, we're seeing new listings returning to the market slowly as we entered the hottest selling season of the year. But the supply deficit is going to take a long time to fill said senior economist from Zillow, Jeff Tucker. Uh, remember, the, see, these are the same guys that were overpaying for houses, and then uh, now they're out there dumping them. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. Expectations for U.S. home values are right here. So they're saying here's the pre-bubble trend. That's the blue line. It's going right there. So this is pre-bubble. They mean this 2008. So if you take the normal trend line, there we go. We're above it. Um, so right here, you're seeing the green line, most optimistic quartile way up here. And the most pessimistic is down here. So even the most pessimistic person is saying that uh, home prices are still going to go up. We got another comment here that says surfboard out going to ride the waves. I can't blame you. So what's going on with mortgage rates? We're up over five now. How high will they go? How high do mortgage rates need to climb before it's time to worry? Above 5.7%. 5.75 says UBS. But don't expect the 2008 style meltdown in housing, even if the interest rate on the benchmark 30 loan, 30 year loan hits that level. Why do they say that? Because at the end of that article, it says we don't have enough inventory. So even if rates get up over 5.5%, um, it's going to have to sit there for a while. And this buying activity is going to have to subside for a long time from what we can see. Now, in the short term, uh, prices are still going up in the Arizona market. And uh, we're expecting that to continue going up through probably June, uh, just based on the numbers that we're seeing. Uh, and it's basically saying um, uh, that meanwhile, home prices are still rising at amazing speed. The average price per square foot has risen 8.9% in the first three months of the year. It's likely to continue rising until June at least. The median sales price is up from 425 to 456 in three months. That's huge. And looks likely to break 470 by the end of the second quarter. The third quarter is always a slower period. 
and it's likely we'll get some respite from the rising prices between June and September. What happens in the fourth quarter largely depend on how, how long investors retain their current euphoric purchases. So they're predicting out to the fourth quarter, Sam, all depends. If investors find other vehicles to put their cash, then that party may be over. Again, I don't see them dumping their homes, but I see them going, well, you know what? I'll make more money in the treasuries and bond market than I am investing in real estate. So let's just park the money over there for a while. Jerry says, lots of factors for Phoenix area home prices. I looked at population and metro area, and it shows that the future, 3.3 million in 2006, 4.6 million now, predicted 5.3 million by 2035 at the current rate of growth. Yeah, I've also found that a lot of those people that are predicting the growth, uh, that really changes. I remember I was uh, got a job in Southern California and uh, moved into my office and, and uh, took over where I had a uh, regional sales manager that like, saved everything. I mean, he had these file folders that just had all kinds of things. And he had, I got there in 1990, 1990 and he had an economic uh, population, economic and population growth forecast from 1982 in his file cabinet. <laughs> I took it to him uh, and uh, it was way off. And I said, oh, hey, you still want this? Because they're way off. I mean, they were predicting unbelievable growth uh, population estimates in, through the 90s that was going to be off the charts. And then things just went to hell in the handbasket. Now, since then, uh, it took off. So it was delayed about a decade, I think. So maybe they were accurate. They were just off a few years. But uh, there are so many opinions out there. You can just drive yourself crazy. So the best thing to do is just look at trends and look and see where we're at on a, uh, not a daily basis, but I think you know where we're headed here. You can see that the interest rate shock has pulled people back. There's no doubt about it. True, it's only been a week, but we're feeling it in the market. You start talking to mortgage people out there, they're feeling it really bad. The lenders that were out there that concentrated on um, purely... Uh, refinancing are probably freshening up their resume. There's going to be a lot of layoffs. And uh, it's tough out there. But, you know, that's what has to happen when you get down to a balanced market. So uh, what makes it hard for us still is just being able to find anything. I can't tell you how many searches I get when somebody gives me exactly what they want to find. I go, okay, you want this, you want this, you want that. Got to have a walk-in pantry. Um, you look it up and, and there's two. Seeing some slowdowns, though, a little bit, a little bit slowdowns in traffic. Used to be uh, not more than two weeks ago. I'd go to look at something, and I'd go to book an appointment, and I would look at the appointment calendar, and I would see that that day and the next day were practically completely full. Now I get on there and go, oh, I might actually get in to see this place. So there's some hope on getting an offer accepted right now if you can afford it. A lot of people, a lot of people have had their pre-qualifications um, adjusted you 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 pre-qualified for a certain price of home now you don't they put their rate in they go well now you can't buy 450 you're gonna have to buy 400 so that's starting to hurt a lot of people out there so stay tuned i'll keep you up to speed on what's going on in this market and don't forget to smash that like button have a great day mm -hmm.